few people will relate, right? But come to think of it, I'm talking about Abakwa or Old Town. The neighborhood that gave genesis to what is today Bamenda, the regional headquarters of the Northwest region of Cameroon. It is home to some of the biggest and most renowned families. A true reflection of Cameroon's diversity and integration. A place with a unique history and reality. Come with me for a new discovery in an old town. Old Town, as the name rightly says, is the oldest neighborhood in the town of Bamenda, the third largest city of Cameroon. Being the land of the Mankan people, who are the original inhabitants of Bamenda, Old Town is officially and traditionally known as Tambang, meaning the abandoned land in the Mankan dialect. Back in the days, it was a virgin forest and hunting ground for the traditional ruler of the Mankon people. However, a lot of people still call this place Abakwa. One major point that makes this neighborhood peculiar is the fact that it hosted the first inhabitants of Bamenda, or better still, it is from here that Bamenda grew to be what it is today. Ntambanga is situated in the central town of Bamenda and it is bordered in the north by Ntamulung and Sonak Street. South by Big Mankon, west by Aziri and Commercial Avenue and in the east by Mendankwe and Station. Present day Ntambanga, also known as Abakwa or Old Town, covers an area of 7,005 meters square, with a population of some 22,000 people. But this evolution came slowly but steadily. Despite divergent opinions about the history of its genesis, it is generally accepted that Tambanga started off as a marketplace within the vicinity of the present police station. Now the old town here is started because this uh, army after the Second World War II. The ex-soldiers from Nigeria everywhere, they knew them as Baminda people. So when they were coming back, they all settled here. And this place at that time, it was called Abakwa, just like you have Abakwa in Calabar, because anywhere the army settled is a Bakwa. And as a result of that, traders from all part, villages, they were coming to sell their products here because of the ex-army people, whether people from Kambe, Wum, once you are an ex-army, they settled here because then it became a small settlement. They called the name Abakwa. How some people came first to live here in this town? According to the history, this town was a hunting place for the fun of Mankon. So he named it Tamba, not Abakwa. Abakwa is not our language. That's why he named it Tamba. In the other time, they came in here in Abakwa town because of the market. The Hausa people had a market up there, of which you people have not seen. Where the public security is, that was the market. Some of the things that my father told me about Old Town is that from the time they come from the village, which is Boom, you know, they settle here in Old Town. So they are the first people in this Old Town, where, you know, Bameda Town, started so they are the very first people that started here and uh, you know it, one of the problem that they told me is you know when they settled here as the the, the Aosa people came from uh, from Kano mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
As the Aosa people came from Kano, you know, they come and meet the Germans up at the station. So they bring them down in the compound, the boom quarter there. So, you know, the Germans said to my father that they should send them a little bit far away because they are making noise. They have something they call it Makalango. So they told them that. So they sent them, you know, at the other side of the, of the, the town. At, uh, Tamulung. So when they went to Tamulung, because of the market in Old Town, so they have been coming, you know, closer and closer and closer. With still no unanimous answer, I questioned some inhabitants who claimed that Ntambanga was first inhabited by a man from Boom who was chased out of his village for having an affair with the Fon's wife. And in this place, he found a safe heaven and made it home. From the market, the main opposite street slowly became a hot spot. Before Abakwa came to be this big, there was one street where everything started and happened. We are talking about the JT Street, which used to be like uh, the commercial avenue that we have now where we had a lot of shops, a lot of activities taking place. Now the name JT comes from a renowned family that is still there. The mother is still there. We're going to be talking with her to find out how things were unfolding here. But just to understand that when we talk about Abakwa, it all started here on the street. The double doors on these houses indicate the presence of shops, an activity that still persists till date. This avenue that also attracted soldiers returning from World War II was named after J.T. Dickum, a former soldier who is today of late but his wife still lives here. Ma JT sits on her doorstep throughout the day. Age is no longer on her side. Her legs can take her far, and her eyesight can capture only a few meters. Memories are scattered, and she vividly remembers life with her husband back in the days. My mom be busy, so my aunt can go see by. You never know JT. Face so there, there. Aunt can see a picture of you. Marry me, may you go to for a bit of jam or two for somebody. Because I want a man for bus or bus. Six more women, may I make it. Well, I hold myself to do it. Maybe we'll be some play later, they belong to that deep play. They live up for JT. No, we deep play, deep play, we be big, big, big. No, we began to do them. No, we just have a big drama. From one great name came several others. These people either invested and made a name in Old Town and their legacy have stood the test of time, while others had children who are making a name. Names used to identify streets as a tribute to their contribution to the development of Old Town. Panguchi was a businessman. My husband, Mr. S. A. Mufo, was a businessman. At that other side, Pa Henry Tengi, the father was the first businessman in town, yeah, Pa Guanula, then Pa Nguchi, Pa Mufo, my husband. Going on, then a little while, some of the youth spring up. People like Pa Chinda, uh, Michael Mufo, Lake Muma of Lake, those of, of Lake. Max Awaso, the father of Anna Kilo, he started this place. Then you have where will be JT in the cook, this extra man. Then you have a Dick. My man from Ako was up there, was the first man to open a bar of that time. So those are the, then we have the Bangu, 
the photographer, he was the first photographer, the father of this one, using that old camera in those days. The new city hotel, standing strong, tells of the presence of late Pa Kilo, one of the wealthiest business baron of Cameroon. Some of his daughters, Dr. Asheri Kilo and Caroline Kilo Barra, today top national and international administrators. Ntambanga can also be proud for being the birthplace of Alhaji Baba Dampolo, one of the wealthiest and most affluent businessmen in Cameroon. Another great name is the Adeso family, especially Dr. Adeso, who owns one of the best private clinics in Bermenda. Another prominent name is the Chinges, the family of Eric Chinje, a renowned international journalist. Not forgetting the Chotu family, the son, one time Cameroonian ambassador to Equatorial Guinea. On these streets and in this house is where Dr. Mbayu, eminent Cameroonian diplomat, grew up. Least I forget the Ambayas and the list goes on. The names are many and if success is contagious, walking these streets might end me some. These people, a huge majority Christians, worshipped at the oldest cathedral in the northwest region called the St. Joseph's Cathedral, Big Mancon, and attended the Catholic primary school, the oldest in the neighborhood. These structures that have stood the test of time still serve the population today. Way back, People lived life to the fullest. Going through these old pictures, they smile, thinking of the good and bad times. Yes, uh, when one ex-army man, because of honey, he wanted to seize honey from a trader in the market here, and the fight started, then the man killed the army, ex-army man killed him. Well, people did not, you know, at that time there was law, so the army man was arrested. The, the, the happy thing was just the collaboration at that time between all villages and everybody here. We were just like brothers in the old town here. And there was an association for us, a Papa Old Boys and Girls Association, where we used to beat and we chat. Unity was their strength, and they came together at their hot spots, sharing beer and locally made alcohol called sha and palm wine. The people loved music, and the first live band was in Golden Fleece Bar, where the people danced to songs by JB Jazz and Bongo Si Choir. Just as music was trending, so was fashion and lifestyle. The outfits changed as well as the hairstyles to suit the times and season. Wondo. Wondo is a type of short blouse like this. We men used to wear wondo. And then men to wear to They called that bashi in those days. As the time was changing, our cloth started coming. They started selling salt in bags. So people were using the empty bag to sew their trousers and so on. They used to sew this wrapper down, gather, and throw it. They used to show sometimes wondo in the villages with a blouse on, on the wondo. They tie it on their waist, then fly the blouse on one go, short one. They used to wear beads even here. Wear beads? On their knees. Wear beads, dress themselves with nice beads. In the market of station, they were very unshakable. They're clothes that dances. <laughs> Shakable. You wear it, 
before smoking. It's the blood. We call it shakeable. Got a waist and so on. Men were showing jumper over lava material and khaki, khaki trouser, short knickers. When you wear long trouser, you are called master. The market and hectic lifestyle must have been a motivating factor for the cosmopolitan nature of Ntambanga. This neighborhood can best be described as Cameroon in miniature, literally hosting people from all cultures and religious backgrounds. For easy administration, the neighborhood has today been divided into three major units. Ntambang 1, 2 and 3 and within these units are 16 smaller quarters. This is Hausa Quarter or call it New Town because it was the first quarter to establish itself after Old Town. The presence of the biggest imperial mosque as well as several other mosques tell of the prevalent Muslim community. The Muslims here are mostly tellers, butchers, while others sell roast meat or soya. The women are involved in petit business and are specialized in the sale of korokoro and adakwa, all snacks made from groundnut paste. The Boom people, suspected to be the oldest inhabitants of this neighborhood, are crowded in Boom Quarter. For long, they had the monopoly of the sale of kerosene, but as time evolved, they diverted to the sale of corn and groundnuts in all its forms. The Ngemba people, who are the original owners of the land, are scattered all over the neighborhood. They own drinking spots and sell cooked food, especially Achu, a delicacy of the Ngemba clan, as well as Fufukon, Huckleberry, and Katikati. Being around this neighborhood, I could not resist having a taste of this cuisine eaten by the people of the Northwest region. The Bamalikes from the West region, concentrated in the Bamalike quarter, are more involved in business. They own shops and some factories. However, they arrived here literally by force. When you had this uh, Makiza problem, the people from East Cameroon, they, some of them escaped here for safety and then uh, for their food gave them a settlement, that side where you call the Bamileke side, to settle there. And the uh, French government now, at that time, they said they should repatriate them. They through refused, say they have escaped, they have come here for safety. So they settled there. Then that's where the Bamileke people to the, start, the town started growing. Another name that leaves little for our imagination is the Devil Street. It was a place that abode the shrine of the Mancon traditional ruler. It is alleged that the fawn came here to pour libation during the planting season and the gods of the land appeared in the form of a snake. However, the name Devil Street today has a whole different meaning. I heard that somebody addressed the Junior brother that was uh -huh. drinking morning, afternoon, evening. Hello? That he's doing a wrong thing. And he told the brother that maybe this street is a yeah. devil, street. it's a devilish street. Yes. So that's from uh -huh. from that day, people take it. So they say this street is a devil street. 
a place that will awaken even the most dormant spirit is the Seven Door and Bayangi quarters. It was the hottest spots back in the days. Bayangi Quarter hosted women from Manfe in the southwest region of Cameroon. They were notorious for sitting on their doorsteps with lit lamps waiting for clients who were mostly people who had done business in the market nearby and had the bounty. A little further from Bayangi Quarters is Seven Door. The name comes from the seven doors of the houses that belonged to a roguish lady called Mami Yayu. One woman came from Banzo called Mami Yayu. Yes, Mama. Mami Yayu. She used to gather little girls from Banzo and keep them here. So she had a brother there, and this Nigerian vehicle they used to come. The park was up here, where the police station is and the market. So when they come there, they go to Seven Door. You have this shower, drinks and so on, and girls. So this woman now was all young girls who escaped from their husbands. They come and she lost them. So that's how the quarter became famous at Seven Door. Time has passed, but the stories and happenings of this place is not near oblivion. A lot of good boys, especially those from Christian schools like CPC Bali and Secret Heart College, became bad boys here. Some boys became men here. A lot of men became fathers here. And this was home to a lot of fatherless children. Meantime, most of the doors at Seven Door have been closed and the yard taken over by the Subi Traditional Association who carry out traditional dance rehearsals. New families have taken up homes and doing more respectable business, thus slowly wiping out the old picture. More so, Seven Door will be remembered as the neighborhood that was the springboard of one of the greatest educational visions in Cameroon. It is from this place that Pai Young of Blessed Memory started his typing school, which is today an education and sporting empire. Ntambanga, Abakwa, Old Town, Three names for just one neighborhood is telling of its uniqueness in terms of its history, realities, and people. A neighborhood born from a small market to become the root of an entire town. An evolution slow, steady, and intriguing. A fascinating story for another day.